Shinatova, everyone. I wish you were in this room with me. I'm going to imagine you sitting in your seats, filling this space with love and prayer. It's bizarre to be here without you, and I miss you immensely. There is no end in sight, I heard a father say in describing his kids' quarantine school experience. What makes this so hard is that there's no end in sight. I heard the same sentiment from a couple who are pregnant and who are trying to plan their future, or from a single person who just wants to see an end to those meals on Shabbos alone, or to a grandparent who wants to meet their grandchild for the first time. Coronavirus has shaken all of us, magnifying the struggles that already existed, but also it's created new anxieties and sources of depression and hopelessness that many of us right now are frankly feeling powerless to change. Chillingly, we are living with sorrow, with loneliness and despondence that many of us also fear we can't see beyond. We are living with an existential crisis. It's challenging even the words, Shana Tova. Can we really welcome this new year and see it as good? In short, what is at stake right now is our ability to hope. Let's look at a text from Aish Kodash, you know, one of my favorites. I think it can give us some wisdom and some chizuk right now. Aish Kodash teaches that during our slavery in Mitzrayim in Egypt, Moshe turned to God and said, as we read in the Torah, Hain b'nei Yisrael lo shamu elai, ani aral svatayim. Moshe said, the people aren't going to listen to me. I am of closed lips. Eish Kodesh asks, how could it be that the people wouldn't listen to Moshe? They were enslaved and all we wanted was redemption. And here it was right in front of us. So why did we resist? The Torah responds, the lo shamu el Moshe mi kotzer ruach kasha. The people did not listen because of their shortness of breath and their hard labor. Eish Kodesh teaches that there is a type of sorrow that makes a person lose the ability to hope. She'enam ro'im et ha'ketz l'choshech to the point that they feel they cannot see an end to darkness. This is why we did not respond to Moshe, why we couldn't even hear him. We were not able to even perceive, receive at all, an end to darkness. How do we possibly overcome this hopelessness? Eish Kodesh answers, im Hashem ki yodeya ata Shehashem Elokecha Imcha Betzara. Draw strength from Hashem your God because you know that God is with you in your suffering. Lachain lo tachsor achidut. And so don't attempt to project and look forward to the future saying, Eini ro'ek hetzlachoshech. I cannot see an end to this darkness. Don't say that, he says. The only way out of the fire is through it. This may seem like passive faith, but it is so far from it. Eish Kodesh here is giving us a profound response to anxiety and depression, that being present in this moment can take us out of the worries of our minds that plague us and make us aware of the divine support for which we have been praying. 
His words are reminiscent of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, who taught that in our deepest, darkest hell, Hashem is with us. How do we begin to do this right now? A mushal, a parable from the altar Rebbe and his Tanya. Mashal lemelech shekodem ba'u la'ir yotzi'im anshe ha'ir likrato mekhablim panav besade. There was once a king who, before he entered into his city, all of the people of the city would come to meet him face to face in the field. And so all who wanted to meet him, the mashal continues, were permitted to do so, and the king received them with pleasantness. In this parable, Hashem is our king, and he is in the field, ready to greet us at this time of year. The image of Hamelech Basadeh, the king is in the field, reminds us that especially during the Chagim, God is not removed. God is in the field with us by our sides, ready to embrace us. Now this, wor this year, with the words of Eish Kodesh, with the words of Rabbi Nachman in my mind, I hear this mashal as referring to a very specific field, the spiritual battlefield. What do I mean by this? God is with us in the very field in which we fight for our hope and our faith. In the field where we struggle to survive just one more day. Despite job loss, despite isolation, shalom bayit tension, and let's be real, those moments when we feel we are at our wit's end. The field in which many of us have never felt less connected to observance and to spirituality. In our machsor, we ask Hashem to fight on our behalf against our accuser, against our sins, against our despair. Yom Hazin, this day of judgment, is a battle. It is a battle when we fight to shed right now anxiety, stress, and fear, and to instead win by being granted life. I'm with you in that battlefield trying to keep going with hope and carrying a lot of fear and loss. Like many of you, I straddle being a parent and a child. I worry about Ella, who most of her life has been this COVID reality. I'm grateful for the time I get to spend with her at home, and Akiva is too. And we also wish that she could be with you guys on Shabbos, that she could socialize with friends and kids her age. I worry about my father, who has been fighting for his own health against kidney failure in these terrifying circumstances. I so wish that I could be there for him and take care of him in person I so wish that he could hold Ella because I know he wants that so deeply. But he's all the way in Michigan. This longing is just a small taste of what we are living. Smachot curtailed, plans uprooted, loved ones alone for the Chagim. And the heartbreak at times we know has been truly excruciating. Several in our community have lost loved ones and not been able to bury them in person. And we at B'nai David have also lost some of our biggest leaders. I think of Steve Lowenstein and Colette Volvovic, Zichonam Livracha. May both of their memories be for a blessing. We will mourn them together this Yizkur, but being in this room and knowing that I'm not going to hear their voices. It's heartbreaking. Sometimes we stumble upon the king in the field. And it's only when we stumble 
that we realize that the only thing in our power is how we face this battle. I think of a recent evening when my Zoom davening bumped up against a moment when Ella was crying out for her mama. I realized that I could get lost in the frustration and stress of me and Akiva trying to juggle it all during COVID. Or I could recognize the blessings in front of me, seek them out, search for them, and then embrace them. We don't have control of what will happen next month, next week, tomorrow. I can tell you right now, we're discussing air quality, we're discussing COVID and social distancing. All of these things we're discussing right now, we never could have imagined back in June having to face. But we have the power to commit to our present and cultivate moments of gratitude at every chance we get. To bravely open our eyes in what Eish Kodesh calls darkness, in what Rabbi Nachman calls hell, in what the Alter Rebbe refers to as the Sadeh, our spiritual battlefield, and to see God there with us, to look for him and be committed to finding God. The truth is that our relationship with God should speak for itself to us and to Hashem. How many of our stories have ended with redemption? So why not ours? And perhaps putting one foot in front of the other with the strength to have hope is how we herald redemption. I think of our Elul Share the Happy WhatsApp, for example, where throughout Elul, BDJers posted pictures, texts, and ideas that brought them joy and laughter. Simcha grounds us with purpose and perspective, and as Rabbi Jonathan Sachs teaches, humor is the oldest form of cognitive therapy. He says that humor is the first cousin to hope. When we're all back in this room, and Bezrat Hashem that will be soon, I Think of all the spots that I know you all sit in and I see you here with me in my mind and in my soul. When we're all really back here together in person, we will cherish any long davening like we missed it for years. We will be filled with joy to hug each other at Kiddush. We will cry when we have the chance to dance with the B'nai, with B'nai Mitzvah kids and with their parents in Simcha. We will be thrilled to be together here. And any time that we have that feeling of there is no end in sight, we need to hold on to that hope. That gives us comfort, that commitment to each other. We need to remind ourselves of this and hold that vision in our mind because that day will come. And we have so much to gain beyond returning to normal in our battle for our ability to hope. This year, when we will literally be davening with our Melech Basadeh, with God out in the fields, in backyards, in parking lots. Thank you, of course, to all of our hosts and everyone who's coordinated that. It's been crazy, especially to Adina and Rav Yosef. They are heroes. But when we are out in the field, literally this year, we have the chance to ask ourselves, when we're striving for this hope that we're all craving for, Will we access and hold on to a resilience and an expansiveness that is unique to this present moment? Will we miss it or will we seize it? Years from now, I pray we can say this. We remember that Rosh Hashanah 5781, that crazy one. That's when we were transformed. We faced our deepest fears, the Kotzer Ruach and Avodah Kasha, and we survived with greater faith than we ever could have imagined. We found a way to connect with friends and family against all odds, and we actually met Hashem in the field. It changed us because we chose to be present to ourselves, to each other, and to God by relinquishing control 
and finding gratitude and hope, even joy in the darkness. We became better people and better Jews that year because that year we found God fighting by our sides in the field. And it gave us the spiritual and moral strength to keep fighting for ourselves and for our world. Sometimes it's in the little moments and sometimes it's in the big ones when God gives us the gifts of redemption and hope. Seizing them does not mean denying our pain and suffering. Just as when we do any mitzvah with faith and joy, it's still, Zechar Litziat Mitzrayim, it's still informed by our experience in Egypt. In choosing to hope, we are still giving legacy and dignity to our pain and loss. And so my tefillah is that with every Shana Tova that we say to each other, we lift each, each other, we lift ourselves out of that darkness and despair just a little bit more. Those words, Shana Tova, can be a mantra that elevates us, that reminds us of what we're working toward and what we have to hope for. And in doing so, may we find that Hashem is by our sides in that field, panim el panim, face to face with us, blessing us with life, with joy, with health, and with hope. Shana tova umetuka. I'm here if you want to talk, if you want to catch up. I'm here for any, any questions you have, any needs or concerns. I miss you all immensely, and I can't wait to see you again in person. I know I have that to hope for and to hold on to. Shana Tova.